Uh, I don't make as much money as WWE, and I certainly wouldn't make as much money off of WWE if uh, I, I was there selling it because they're probably going to make a lot of money. And Vince McMahon has returned to the company, and I, I guess we'll kind of reset things here a little bit um, since we talked to you last, and we last talked to you on Friday. And we had gotten news from WWE that Vince McMahon had indeed, much like the Wall Street Journal has been reporting, inserted himself back into WWE. He was looking for a way back in. He was not wanted back in in any particular role. And he went through the means to force himself back in as the executive chairman of the company, uh, still with Nick Khan and Stephanie McMahon as co-CEOs. And he did that by putting himself onto the board, by getting rid of three people without cause and inserting himself and former WWE co-presidents Michelle Wilson and George Barrios onto the board. And why was all this happening? What is it about right now that makes Vince McMahon want to insert himself into a position where he cannot be ignored? And much of the speculation has come from whether or not they're going to sell. And we know the media rights deals were coming up. We know that they expire in 2024. Much of the conversation about those deals is, was going to be taking place in the second half of this year. Him wanting a role in those negotiations makes sense, but he didn't exactly have to make the power move, the type of power move that he did right now to go ahead and do that. He feels as though seemingly that there is a a, a rush to do this. He's got to go ahead and get this done. And, and now the question is why? Is it because WWE is considering a sale? Have they been considering a sale and trying to line things up? And he now wants to insert himself to make sure that he has the first crack to negotiate any deal, especially if he would like to buy the company and take it back private again so that people never have to report or, or possibly hear about any of his misgivings and misdoings that he uh, that has led to his ouster in the first place. You know, what does all of this mean? There's been CNBC's report on Saturday that J.P. Morgan has been brought in to advise WWE as the company looks to line up a sale. Uh, it's been said three months. Uh, what the article actually said was three to six months with, with a deal would likely occur in the next three to six months. Uh, said the people who asked not to be named because the discussions are private. And Sherman added that not only obviously the JP Morgan and WWE declined to comment, but that, uh, they did mention a bunch of possible landing spots for WWE, possible buyers for WWE and who could be interested. And that has opened up a can of worms for speculation and people wondering on, on who it could be. NBC Universal, obviously, the longtime relationship that Vince McMahon and Bonnie Hammer had with USA for years and years. And as she worked her way up inside NBC, the relationship continued to be strong. And you see, obviously, where the USA Network would be without WWE programming that gets talked about a lot on this show and on the website. They are very much in need of WWE programming. It would be a perfect setup for them. Xfinity, a massive media corporation. There's the Universal Studios things. There's lots of different reasons why it, it may be a good idea for them to be involved. And of course, that's brought up a lot of other different names as well, too. Legacy, uh, Legacy Media being one of them, Endeavor being one of them, or sorry, Liberty Media being one of them. They're the ones who actually have a stake in Sirius XM. They have a big stake in Live Nation and running that. Obviously, WWE being a big event and touring brand would seemingly work really well with them. There's been, obviously, the Endeavor deal, which, hey, look, the Endeavor deal with the UFC was very beneficial for those who sold, and it's been very beneficial for Dana White because he retained a position in the company. 
he's actually still there because they want him to be there. And we just had the situation with him slapping his wife, appearing on TMZ and him appearing on TMZ, talking about that and the slap fight deal that's going to be coming up. And, and for the most part, nothing's really been said about Dana White by anybody at Endeavor, seemingly. So, you know, you look at what has happened with Vince you know, if they're not saying anything about Dana, would they look the other way? You know, bringing Vince in if they decide to buy the company and they want Vince on board. But that's what a lot of this comes down to is, is Vince positioning himself to either buy the company or make sure that when the company is sold, that he has a vested interest in what comes next as being there to run the company or have some sort of hands-on dealings with the company, which... As we mentioned last week, it's been only six months, and Vince McMahon could not stay away for long enough. And as we also mentioned last week, there are still things floating out there about Vince, which is why the board didn't want him back in the first place. They unanimously voted they didn't want Vince back. One of the reasons why is there are still SEC investigations going on. There are still government investigations going on into the nondisclosure agreements and into this misuse of company funds. All that stuff is still taking place, and there still may be other things out there. You remember, it wasn't until the initial reporting on this stuff came out in, I'd have to go back and look, but I believe it was April. It wasn't until August when we heard about the deal with the Trump Foundation and, and the misgivings about that money. We found out about the other spa case, not the one in Florida, but the one in California that we talked about, where the guy came at Vince with a bat. We We found out that because... Uh, in California, in New York, they put a moratorium in. Uh, and so if you were sexually assaulted or claimed sexual assault, you have uh, up to a year uh, to put a civil case on that person. So with Rita Chatterton and with this woman in California, we found out about that because of the reporting. So how much more is actually out there? How much more is there that is really damaging to Vince McMahon? Because... In any sale, I can't believe it's just going to be this type of echo chamber, you know, the wrestling media echo chamber that is talking about the fact that Vince coerced somebody into oral sex, an employee, a female on the roster, and then when she refused his advances, demoted her and then ultimately did not renew her. You know, there is the case what this whole thing was built around about the paralegal, the email of the friend about the paralegal that the Wall Street Journal, you know, saw and found out about, you know, that email talks about the fact that remember the quote of she was passed around like a toy, you know, to the to somebody else and the culture of the company, John Laurinaitis, head of talent relations, being involved in this, having this situation. And, you know, the Wall Street Journal described it in a podcast. I think it was Ted Mann, one of the journalists on the deal who talked about it with the board, looking at it as this was a relationship where somebody was victimized. She was in crisis kind of going into the job. She had all these personal issues. She had all these financial issues. And... You know, they basically, Vince McMahon, the head of the company, took advantage of this woman. And they're saying, after all the investigations, that the culture is now clear, everything is good. And now Vince is back. But there's a lot of other things we need to get into in the wrestling world, and I shall do that when we get back from break. Wrestling Observer Live. So Mike Sempervivi here with you, Wrestling Observer Live. Almost talked right into the show about what I was talking about during break, which was Atlanta Falcons football, the end of the season. Dom asked me about them. I'm feeling better about next season. I am. I am. But, you know, we're not here to talk about football. We're here to talk about professional wrestling. And, you know, if you like professional wrestling, you should make the wrestling news part of your day. All of the news that you need to know between 5 and 
15 minutes every day, roundabout, always posted up by 9 a.m. Eastern time every single day, free. Everything you need to know in the world of wrestling to get you up to date. Did you fall asleep during Raw? We got you covered. What were the headlines going on in Japan or elsewhere? We got you covered there, too. Here for your, your ride to work, your ride to school, your, your, your coffee break. We're here to get you to your favorite podcast, like Wrestling Observer Radio, which Dave and Brian will be talking about Raw tomorrow at length. They make a lot of money in WWE. And, oh, you know, before I get to the amount of money they're making in WWE off of uh, WrestleMania 39, I should note as well, too, since when we went off the air uh, last Friday, they were having the all-hands-on-deck team meeting uh, via Zoom for WWE with Stephanie McMahon, Frank Riddick, and Nick Khan talking to all of the talent and all of the employees on what was going on and... Not a whole lot really came out of that. You know, obviously Vince is in charge and he's the boss and everything is going to go through him. That was reiterated. And they did talk about the possibilities of a sale, the possibilities of the, the media deals, the the privatization of the company, if it came down to that. And I know there are people that are thinking that that is very much going to be the case. That is exactly what Vince wants to do is have people lined up. Barrios and Wilson actually started in January an investment company. They've done very little since starting that investment company as far as acquisitions go, but could they be in, in, in part of something? Could Vince, you know, want to buy the stock back, take it private? You know, what does then that mean for SEC rules and all that sort of stuff? I have no idea, and we're just going to have to see how things play out. There has been a promise, as was promised, all of the talent, that there is not going to be a shakeup in anything with the day-to-day -day operations of the company, anything that has to do with them, anything that has to do with the creative or what goes on screen. Remember the statement that Vince said he was very happy with everybody there and everything will run unencumbered uh, from now to eternity. Uh, Vince is only here to negotiate those other deals, but you know, if the company does end up getting sold, which were to be under the belief that they're looking to do something like that, well, if that's the case, then what happens when it goes back under the control of Vince or when it goes back into the control of somebody else's hands? What does that mean for everybody else? What does it mean for Stephanie? What does it mean for Paul Levesque? Nick Khan, I think he's going to be okay. He'll make out in whatever deal that, that he helps to get made anyway. But, you know, I guess there are some questions over, over some of that stuff moving forward here. But certainly looks like, as of now, that they are, are, are at least serious on paper to possibly be lining up a sale. Because I don't know how much J.P. Morgan costs to keep on retainer, but it can't be cheap. So if this is a work, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, Vince is really going all out for it. But he obviously has mowed down and everybody and everything that he needed to do to get back into a position where he can start swaggering about when it comes to some of these deals. Randy, and let's do the wrestling report. What do you got today? Put your laughing gear on. <laughs> My laughing gear. <laughs> what is uh, wrestle uh, load? <laughs> and Brian Hawks. I, I don't. That's what Vinny got paid after his show? I don't. I don't know what wrestle load is. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. It's Russell Cade. Oh, oh well, that good. makes more sense. Where'd Brian go? <laughs> he's recuperating. He's, he's broken. You broke him, Granny. <laughs> Sheesh. I have right. never. I have. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.